As we approach our 10th season here at the helm of the Vancouver Canucks ship, things have gone very, very well. Obviously, three straight cups. We just had our best season yet, but of course, it ended in a failure. The problem now is having the likes of Carlson and Stamkos both be 34 years old. And I've come to the decision, we are drastically, and I mean drastically, going to shake this team up rather than using our abundance of first and second round picks towards actual draft picks. We're going to use them to get some fresh blood into this team. But before that, let's check to see if we end up with another top five pick. I think there's a very strong chance of that happening. And would you look at that? We end up with the second overall pick. So yet again, a top five pick. But before that, we have a lot of work to do. Now we have two trades to make with the Pittsburgh Penguins, so let's get the big one out of the way early. It is Steven Stamkos and draft picks to the Penguins for Ole Mata. Now, the Boston first overall pick is of course 30 or 30th overall as they won the Stanley Cup, and the Avs and Islanders second round picks were the lowest valued of those picks. Simply put, the big thing we're changing up now is the defense. I think now, of course, with Stamkos, as I said, being 34 years old, with four years of what will eventually now be three years left on his deal, now is the time to move on. It's not easy, especially because now we really need certain players to step up and really deliver the offense as Stamkos has been doing. But giving you a look at Olimata, he's locked in above a 90 overall, 29 years old, has a pretty solid contract for a legit top two defenseman. I looked at some other guys, Oliver Ekman Larson included, Wierenski and Ryan Murray on Columbus. Mata was the guy that we could afford to get, and we do. Next up, it's another big trade, and we're gonna move on from the Triamkin seth Jones pairing. It is Jones, Toronto's first round pick, Detroit second and Tampa second, along with the prospect who simply isn't going to pan out, to the Pittsburgh Penguins for franchise potential defenseman Yasina. And we'll take a look at him right now. Again, it's a very big move. We're giving up a lot of assets to get this guy, but we do end up now with Pittsburgh's top two defensemen. And there you see Cedric Yasina, 23 years old, high franchise potential, 88 overall already. So I have a pretty strong feeling he's going to pan out to be one hell of a defenseman. And this last trade also wasn't easy. It is a gigantic trade to make, but Eric Carlson, Coral Yuck, who is a decent prospect for us, but I really don't see him becoming anything that we can really use in the future, along with two first round picks and Pittsburgh second to the Florida Panthers for Aaron Ekblad and a prospect named Plant. Now, of course, we'll take a look as you can see, we are down to just our second overall pick at this point and one second round pick. But taking a look, of course, Aaron Ekblad, just as good as you guys would think he is. But Plant, 76 overall, high elite potential that could turn into franchise. He's only 21 years old, 76 overall. I'm intrigued to see what he can turn into. Those will be the three trades for now because we're going to move forward into the actual draft. And of course, as you guys know, odds are We'll have a ton of more trades coming up as we usually do. But here you see with the second overall pick, we actually lock out the uh, Washington Capitals. Almost said Winnipeg Jets. The Washington Capitals take Stortini with the first overall pick. He's only medium elite. We take Harry Noonan just on a guess because, again, he was the top five guy. I said, why the hell not? He ends up being high elite potential, so a good start there. Now, for the sake of having this episode be a little bit shorter, and of course, because we traded away so many first and second round picks, I'm just going to show you guys the list of who we drafted so you know who to look out for, mainly because uh, not only in the interest of keeping this episode short, but because we've, uh, as we've recently seen, I should say, this game has a tendency to have players that you just drafted not actually be the potential that it shows that they are. But there's the list, quite a few third round picks in there, and let's hope they can pan out to be just a little bit something, or at least get us back a little bit more than what we spent on them. And now that we've hit the re-sign phase, of course, it's a pretty big time period for us really needing to get our roster sorted out here. Of course, we do need to re-sign. Uh, what's his face? We just traded for him. 
and I cannot remember his name. The guy from Pittsburgh, Yasina, is a restricted free agent. But first, let's take a look at goaltenders, and really there's nothing we need to do. Thatcher Demko is still our goalie, unless Mahalik gets a big overall boost between now and the start of the next season, in which case Demko will be traded, and will probably sign Koivisto to be the backup down in Utica. But moving on to the defense, of course, it's now Ekblad and Mata as our top pairing. Chitrin Yasina is the second pairing. Unfortunately, because of that, it looks like we're going to lose Stetcher and Tramkin for free. Of course, in this game, it doesn't matter if they are without contract. The uh, game won't take them. I tried to offer Stetcher to, I think, Carolina for a seventh round pick like five years from now, and they wouldn't budge. So that is unfortunate. Let's see if we can drop Goulet or however the hell you pronounce that name. Uh, is, there, is there anybody else, I should say? Englishman Wolski is a restricted free agent and is leaving our team. Could have sworn there were some other players. There were not. Uh, Commodore, one of the guys we drafted, though, top four. So not too bad. That, that uh, worked out well, I should say. And yeah, that, that pretty much does it. I mean, we just need to send that offer to Yasina. And then if we have room to re-sign Stetcher and Tramkin just so that we can trade them, I might do it. Although we could very well get in trouble for doing that. But let's take a look here at Yasina. 7-7, seven, seven, even 8-7 isn't too bad and will look like a pretty good contract here in a few years. Actually, who else needs to be re-signed? We should probably take a look at that before I invest a lot of money. Yowensu needs a new contract. Okay, is that it? Is that it, hopefully? Heinen needs a new deal. And that's pretty much it. So not, not too bad there. I think we can afford to give Yasina that pretty big contract. And I can't imagine that we would not be able to re-sign. I'm going to try 8.4 here. 8.45. I can't imagine we won't have the space to re-sign Stetcher and Triamkin and then eventually deal them, but I'm looking forward to seeing what prospects here can make the jump. Yoensu is one of them. We really need him to make the jump here. He is looking for ridiculous money. I don't exactly want to hand him a seven-year deal because that's absurd, but he is a first-line guy at this point. Let's see if he accepts seven mil just straight up, 7 mil, 7 by 7 here. Robert Carlson needs a new contract as well. Three years isn't bad. We'll try 4.8 for him. Again, I'm not doing the 8% uh, uh, trick at the moment. Just to, uh, it's, like I said, uh, before I did it and then the uh, one offseason where I did it, it's hit or miss for me for some reason. Maybe it's just the type of player. Noonan, 69 overall. Still high elite potential. But he is not going to be a factor like uh, like some of the other guys are. Holy shit. Essa Hall is an 88 overall. Are you fucking... He started last season at, what, a 62? Holy shit. That is the most ridiculous example of progression I think I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, Savage needs a new deal. Give him 3-2 for three years. I know he's restricted. It doesn't matter. Grantham needs to be released. It's like next offseason. You can see all the uh, all the contracts coming up. Next offseason is going to be a bitch. Uh, we did end up getting... Some of these guys were top nine. I think Kamins uh, Kamiski was a fucking top six. How was he up to elite? My God. We got pretty lucky there. Man, the draft has just been so kind to us lately. Um... Ackerland can go, uh, Castellet can go, do we re-sign Danton Heinen is a pretty big question, I don't see why we wouldn't, to be honest, I don't know who's coming up in terms of free agency, but it definitely looks like we're going to need some contracts, so maybe look to give Danton Heinen another one year deal, and we'll take it from there, we'll just see if he accepts that, we'll move forward, we'll send the day, and then potentially look at signing Stetcher and Tramkin. I'm not sure if I want to because again, I don't want to risk getting in trouble for signing and trading But if this game wasn't shit, and I could trade their rights. That would be wonderful. Danton Heinen has uh, accepted the Savage. Yasina, Yowensu, Carlson are all back. So that is good. Things are shaping up very nicely for this team here moving forward. Again, a complete overhaul 
of our defense, but I'm looking forward to seeing the results. And quickly, let's take a look and see, should we sign, ah, we got 10, pretty much $11 million now in cap space. I want to do it. I want to do it. Everything's saying do it because I don't want to let guys like them just walk away. Although I told you Stetcher was a rental, but Stetcher and Trampkin are gone. It's a hard, hard thing to do. You know, letting go, letting go of guys like Pareko and, uh, or Pareko through the trades. And of course, Trampkin's been here since day one they are now gone as you can see we're hoping plant has a big uh progression period again but that'll do it for the resign phase let's move on to free agency and for the first time in quite a few years we might be making a move if somebody is available the day has arrived let's see the free agent list are there any big fish hayden flurry is there stetcher and triampkin of course jeremy lozon so some decent names here, some decent names that we might be able to make a play for. But I have to say at this point, after taking a look at the free agent list and who we have on our team already, while it would be nice to have some of these players, unfortunately there aren't really any prospects I want. Like having Hayden Flurry would be nice, Bodker, Jaden Schwartz, or even bringing back Stetcher to be on the right side. It'd be nice to have these players, but I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to bank on good progression from our players. I am very, very tempted to re-sign Stetcher for one year. There, you know what? God, should I? Because if I don't, it comes down to Plant hopefully making it. You know what? We have the space. I'm going to send Stetcher because he's a righty, a one-year deal. I don't know if he'll accept it. We'll offer him 7.25. And we'll see if he goes for it. If he doesn't, that's fine. But if he does, then cool. We have Troy Stetcher for one more year. And he will be on our third defensive pairing. But let's go ahead now and just sim up here. See what he says. I imagine he's going to Columbus. Who would, de who would decline going to Columbus right about now? Uh, my God, just give us an answer. Would you, Jesus Christ? Unless he already went and it's still glitched out. It has to still be glitched out for me. Uh, signing and trading people, right? I mean, let's see. Let's go to approach. Is he there? He's not there. Okay, good. So it's still glitched out. That's wonderful. Thank you for wasting my time, EA. Let's sim forward to the next season. Now, guys, before moving forward and getting a look at the team, which, by the way, I think you're going to love the way this team looks, we do have just one trade to make so far. I think it's the only trade that we're going to have to make, cycling out prospects who simply aren't useful to us anymore. That would be Gallant, who I still had a lot of hope for, but he's now 24 years old and hasn't moved up to top six. Uh, we also have Varlamov, a bottom six forward, and then Kondratiev and Gunnarsson on defense. We send them to the Islanders for their first and second round pick in the upcoming draft. All right, so we actually had one more trade to make, and that is Jaden Bolt, our former second round pick, who just doesn't really fit into the lineup anymore. He's been surpassed on the food chain, along with two guys we just drafted, Deschamps and Mrazek, who I just really don't see working out on our team. I'd rather give the time in the AHL to other players. We send them to Chicago for their first and third round pick this year. So here we go, guys. The team is pretty much set. There's just a couple of things I want to point out here. First of all, 98 offense, 94 defense, 91 goaltending. Down in Utica, it's 78, 74, 79, which is pretty good. Not the highest we've seen for our AHL team. But yeah, let's take a look at this team. Top line, Essa Hall. Yeah, just, my God. First of all, he's a 90 overall, legit. I will even put up a screenshot from earlier before I made the trades involving the likes of Gallant and Bolt. That's all morale. He is a legit 90 overall, and he has moved up to franchise potential in one season. Was it one season? From a 62 to a 90. For God's sake, it's unbelievable. He is a legit first line now. Not bad for the 51st overall pick. Uh, new top line center, Laurent DeRocher, the former number one overall pick. Now a 90 overall as well at medium elite potential, 22 years old. They are with Essa Yoensu, of course, now 25. We just gave him the new contract. He is, of course, a first line forward, 88 overall. We need a big season from him with the contract we just gave him. 
Moving on to the second line, it's Jordan Hendry, 87 overall, medium elite potential at 21 years old, the former fifth overall pick in the same, or actually the year after the DeRocher draft, excuse me. Austin Matthews, he is listed as a first line forward, so I'm a little bit concerned playing him out of that. Now is his last year of progression. I actually think it might roll over here in a minute. So he's not going to crack 90 overall, but for a second line center, that's pretty damn good. And Robert Carlson, he is listed as a second line forward, so we'll give him a chance. Like offensively, like his shooting is absolutely unreal. And I hope playing with Matthews and Hendry can really open that up. He is, of course, medium top six at 25 years old. The third and fourth lines, this is where it gets interesting. We, of course, have Jonathan Drouin, Danton Heinen, and now 88 overall Brendan Schneider, who's only a third line checking forward. I feel like he should probably be a power forward, but he's a bit undersized. I can't really change it anyway without the age glitch happening. But 21 years old, medium elite potential for him. I'm not sure how he's going to work out there. I think he'd fit better in on the fourth line, but he starts with Heinen and Drouin. The reason I say that is we have Jorgen Backlund, who is now in the lineup. Only depth for, but 83 overall, medium top six potential at 22 years old. We also have Wade Savage now at 85 overall, making his entrance into the lineup. On the fourth line, Drake Kajula will be the center. Only 75 in faceoffs, so I'm not too concerned. 30 years old now. I'm intrigued to see how he does it. He, of course, should be a second line forward, but that just kind of shows the depth. So much youth in this team at this point it is unreal but the fact that we have had Essa Hall jump to franchise DeRocher, Yowensu, Carlson, Hendry, Schneider, Savage, Backland all new players uh, for the most part within the past year now on this team from what I can remember here so unbelievable and defensively it might even be better Ole Mata 91 overall he of course now is 30 years old Aaron Ekblad a 92 Chitrin's in 88, also in his last year of development. Cedric Yasina, still high franchise. He has already jumped to a 90 overall. So Aaron Ekblad very quickly has become a little bit expendable if we choose to go that route. And of course, heading into next season, as you guys saw with the contracts, we're going to need quite a bit of money free. So this might be the only year that we have Aaron Ekblad and we might phase him out. The third pairing is Par Forstrom. He is with Pascal Plant, who is only an 81 overall, but we're going to leave him in. Of course, the Stetcher signing would have worked out perfectly. I did actually get a notification telling me I should be free to, uh, free to sign free agents once again. So that's good, but interesting. I mean, obviously, that top four is the best top four um, probably ever assembled. I mean, certainly by us, and I have yet to see another team with that good of a top four. And of course, we'll check over the goalies, and this is actually one of the things I, or really the only thing I wanted to go over as far as questions go. Thatcher Demko still there. Nyquist has dropped to fringe starter potential. He's an 84 overall. Um, Mahalik is an 82 and is now labeled as a backup goalie, so we need to get him starts. The question to you, Demko or Nyquist? Both could fetch a pretty penny at this point. Nyquist, we know, isn't going to be the starter. So if it was up to me, as much as it sucks because of what Nyquist did for us uh, not too long ago, I think the better bet would be go would be to go with Demko for now until Mahalik is ready. Both of these guys' days as Vancouver Canucks are numbered, though. And quickly for the hell of it, we'll look over the AHL before we wrap up this episode. It's looking pretty damn good. We have Noonan, who, of course, is high elite potential. Doyle is there. Sloan is there. And just overall, as you get a look at the potentials, things are looking pretty good. Bakar is also somebody we just drafted. I'm pretty sure he was top six. He jumped to elite. So we've had quite a bit of luck and everybody else on the team here. The bottom pairings are top nine. Defensively, it's still looking pretty weak, unfortunately, with Derek Corey being a top four. Uh, he's second best to William Gannon, who is elite. From there, it's all top six, including low top six for Charlie Rosehill, so that's looking a bit rough. The goaltending, of course, though, still looking good. Daniel Bergeron, elite potential, and Vesa Koivisto, who we just signed, is starter potential. But guys, that is it for the team and this episode. I think we rebounded very well 
for a team that just gave away Stamkos, Seth Jones, lost Stetcher, and Triamkin traded Eric Carlson. I think we rebounded very, very well and still put ourselves once again in a very strong position to compete. We could have easily sold those players off and just drafted more guys, but I really think with this roster, we're in a very good spot if these young guys can produce the way we need them to produce. And of course, as I said, defensively, we're absolutely stacked. Might be the only season with that foursome there as the top two pairings, but who knows what we will accomplish this season. But that'll, of course, do it for this one, guys. Of course, if you did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button. Hell, if you didn't, but you somehow made it to this point in the video and you didn't like it, I mean, number one, what's wrong with you? But hey, feel free to hit the dislike if you want. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button to continue following this series as we move in to Season 10 with the Vancouver Canucks.